Hey folks, welcome to another episode of Cutter One. I'm your host, JJSJ, your resident troublemaker and your resident culture warrior. Hope you're all doing well. All right, let's get right into this one, shall we? This is coming from our good friends over at Screen Rant, and it says, Sauron wasn't lying in Rings of Power's finale. Sauron finally revealed himself at the end of The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power, Season 1, and he wasn't actually lying about his motives. Sauron wasn't actually lying when he tried to tempt Galadriel in The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power's final episode. The first series of Amazon's The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power... Uh, I'm sorry. The first series of Amazon's The Lord of the Rings prequel series essentially sold itself as mysteries that were only unraveled in the final episode. The end of The Rings of Power finally confirmed Sauron's true identity, revealing that he had been acting under the alias of Halbrand, manipulating Galadriel to ensure the first rings were forged. Galadriel realized the truth too late and was foolish enough to confront Sauron directly. He used his dark magic to enter her mind using visions and hallucinations to tempt her to his side. Sauron claimed he was acting not out of a lust for power, but out of a desire for peace, and that he longed to heal Middle-earth from the damage it had suffered during the long, bitter war against Morgoth. The scene was beautifully done, continuing J.R.R. Tolkien's imagery of Sauron as a fallen angel, his Lucifer figure. The one who tempts Eve in the Garden of Eden and Jesus at the beginning of his ministry. It showed how even an elf like Galadriel could fall with Sauron appealing to her goodness and perverting it. I totally disagree with this. Um, and as you guys know, I've said this before. Morgoth, if you read the Silmarillion and how Morgoth falls right the fall of morgoth if you will right from the beginning ultimately to where he he gets banished to the void or he he goes to the void right um he's the more and i've said this before and i know it caused some people to get all gur and stuff he's the more luciferian figure in tolkien's works okay well, i'll say that again luciferian figure okay i understand the name and so on and so forth Morgoth is more the devil, right? He is the archangel, the whereas according to the Bible, right, the devil is the most beautiful of angels, right? In Tolkien, Morgoth, he knows a little bit of everybody else's songs, right? Not none of the others, not Manwe, not uh Yavanna, they all know their part in the song okay but it's morgoth who knows a little bit of everybody's right so he's the more luciferian figure he's the one that directly challenges eru iluvatar the, the way the devil direct or satan or lucifer directly challenges god right so that's that's what tolkien did sauron to me at least and this is my interpretation of it okay and i'm not a very religious person so if you're coming at me with scripture and stuff like that you're wasting your time i'm not very religious okay i, I believe people are can believe whatever they want i just am not very religious but i do have an interest in stuff like that right so um i believe that sauron represents more of the antichrist figure in tolkien's work Right. So whereas you have for, for the sake of argument on, in our conversation here, I'm just going to say Lucifer. OK, although I know some people may say, well, that name never actually shows up. But Lucifer slash the devil slash Satan slash Shaitan slash whatever the big evil. Right. So you have Morgoth equivalent of him, whereas. Sauron, in my interpretation, has always been more equivalent to the Antichrist. And the Antichrist shows up in Revelations, right? And he's the one that sort of gathers people to him, right? He, he's the one that sort of, you know, becomes a leader of, of industry and nations, right? And 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 sort of is the, the charismatic figure that people are drawn to, right? But it's all lies and deception. But he's the charismatic figure that people are drawn to. So he's like the devil's like top lieutenant, right? And in my opinion, 
that's the role Sauron fills in relation to Morgoth. So when the article says that, like, you know, Sauron is, you know, the 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 Lucifer figure, the one that tempts Eve in the in the Garden of Eden and stuff like that. I don't see that. I I see Sauron as more of the Antichrist figure, um, whereas Morgoth is more of the the big bad, the big evil. But that's just my opinion. Let's get back to the article. Um, blah, 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 blah. J.R. Tolkien's imagery of Sauron, the fallen angel, uh, tempts, Eden, tempts uh, Eve in the Garden of Eden and Jesus the beginning of his ministry. It showed how even an elf like Galadriel could fall uh, with Sauron appealing to her goodness and perverting it. Most viewers will assume Sauron was simply trying to get into Galadriel's head, taking advantage of the friendship he had cultivated with her while acting under the alias of Halbrand. But he was able to make such an appeal precisely because this is indeed his motive in Middle-earth's Second Age. According to J.R.R. Tolkien's notes, the author planned to reveal Sauron had abandoned his master Morgoth shortly before his defeat at the end of the First Age. Sauron really did dream of uniting the people of Middle-earth and undoing the harm raked, wreaked during the con during that conflict. This would eventually be warped into a desire for power and control, however, leading Sauron to become as great and evil as Morgoth. Um, this adds further depth to the Lucifer-Sauron parallels. The Christian Bible regards Lucifer as the father of lies, and the most convincing lies are half-truths. Sauron is able to tempt Galadriel precisely because she senses the honesty in his words, and it takes tremendous force of will for her to see through his words and recognize that the world of peace and order he promised would be one where he was in a position of absolute power. Again, my, my take is slightly different. Um, yes, but we, we know Tolkien did state that Sauron's motivations are different from Morgoth's. And I actually did a video. I'll put it at the end here where you, you guys can click on it. If you're, if you haven't seen it yet, um, I actually did a video where we told, I, I talk about how Tolkien talks about the motivations were different between Morgoth and, and Sauron. Morgoth wanted to destroy, completely destroy. If he didn't create it, it didn't deserve to be, and that was what drove him. Whereas Sauron, and, and I think I, I caught some flack because I used the word like, he, I, I think I said heal. He wanted to heal Middle-earth of the damage that had been done in the war with Morgoth, right? Um, but the only way to do that was everybody would have to get on board with his plan, i.e. he would have to be the ruler of it all to make sure that it all got fixed, Right. So that's always been like Tolkien fans have always known that Sauron, that was his motivation, that his motivation was he felt that he could bring about a better <laughs> to put it in modern terms, like like advertising. He could bring about a better tomorrow for Middle Earth and all its inhabitants. All you have to do is sign up and become one of Sauron's legions. Right. That that's sort of what his take was. Um Again, to me, that's more like the Antichrist, right? Because it, in Revelations, and the Antichrist, you know, comes along and is promises of peace and end to starvation and disease and stuff. All you have to do is sign on and get the mark of the beast and you'll be good, right? And to me, I've always seen Sauron like that. But um, yeah, all right, let's get back into it. Um, a promise would be one where he was in a position of absolute power. How will Sauron's motive influence the Lord of the Rings, the readings of power? This potentially sets up Sauron's plans in the Rings of Power Season 2. All the best villains believe they are the heroes in their own story. The Sauron of the Second Age is no different. He generally believes he alone can offer salvation for Middle-earth, and he uses this to justify his insatiable lust for power. This will lead him to seek out the three elven rings that were forged in the Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Power, Rings of Power's finale, simply because he hopes to control the elves. It will ultimately lead him to forge the One Ring in secret, the ring above all other rings that will allow him to control those who wield the others. Um, okay, that's where it goes off the rails a little bit, because as we know, the Elven Rings um, are not 
the first ones made, they're the last ones made, there's the rings of dwarves and the rings of men, and so, yeah, okay, we know, we know where it's going to go off the rails here, um, and again, I think it's a fundamental misunderstanding that there's this insatiable lust for power that's what's motivating, uh, Sauron I don't think it is I think you know if you understand how uh Sauron was originally what was it Mayuran and who studied under Aule um in in forging and stuff like that um and and that that's ultimately it, it's this this fascination or 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 um infatuation with order and things being orderly and and shaped into order, right? That that Myron ultimately Sauron has, and that's ultimately what leads him to side with Morgoth is that he saw how Morgoth was able to bend the will of things around him to what he wanted, right? It was this ability to order things, to fashion things in in the way in which he wanted it that drew Sauron to Morgoth. And I think that's ultimately what always motivates Sauron is this insatiable desire for order, to create that order, that fine precision order. And that goes all the way back to his time as Myron studying under Aule in the forges, right? Um, it, it, it's what drives him. And so he feels he can bring that order and he can shape Middle Earth and, and fix Middle Earth. And don't give me a raft of shit about it, okay? You know what I'm talking about. Middle Earth... Um, using this this need for order and this need to to make it precise and bend it to his will right and ultimately that's what motivates him i don't think it's just as simple as a base level lust for power like even in the movies they talk about like the one ring it it it, it allows him to dominate right it doesn't allow him to flat out control it's not like you put the ring on and sauron says go jump off a cliff and you do it right but it allows his will his need to order things in a specific way to dominate yours right so that you still have your will to do what you want but it gets twisted and subsumed by sauron's will through the one ring anyway that's what I think. I think the article makes an interesting point, but I don't think any of us who are Tolkien fans ever thought that, you know, Sauron was lying because that conversation never really happened. But anyway, I digress. Anyway, let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Do you think, one, Morgoth or Sauron is the more Luciferian, and you know how I'm using that word, type figure within Tolkien's work? Right? Do you think Morgoth is like the Lucifer figure, Satan figure, and Sauron is the Antichrist figure, like I view it? Or do you see it the other way around? Or maybe there's a third option I'm not even thinking about. Let me know what you guys think in, in the comment section below. It'd be an interesting conversation. Again, I'm not attacking anybody's religion. Don't take it that way. Right? Just having a conversation. Um, and the other thing is... Um, Clearly, we know that Sauron wasn't lying because that conversation never happened. Um, but what do you think ultimately Sauron's motivations was? Do you think it was as simple as a baseline lust for power? Or do you think it was more like I was saying, you know, his this desire to order and fashion things in an orderly way? Right. And that that's ultimately what his motivation was. Right. Um, let me know what you think down in the comments section below. All right, if you like the video, like the video. If you feel like sharing the video, by all means do so. It helps get the word out there. It helps us build the community of people willing to stand up and defend Tolkien. And if you have not subscribed, I would hope this might make you consider subscribing. It would mean a lot to me. It would mean a lot to the channel. It helps us with the algorithm. And we need more people carrying the banners and flags and saying, you know, unlike other franchises, this one will not go silently into the night. Um, and if you have subscribed, thank you once again from the bottom of my heart for showing up and participating. I look forward to seeing everyone's comments down in the comment section below. Until then, be good, be safe, be awesome. I will see you on the next one. Peace.